This is going to be a conversation about shared vendor bill, a little overview and a little quick uh, agenda here. We'll just introduce the concept of shared vendor bills and what uh, this bundle does. Then we'll talk about installing and configuring um, NetSuite to support the bundle. And uh, before get, you know, discussing a little bit about the actual use of shared vendor bills and uh, hopefully uh, jumping into a demo in NetSuite. Okay. So what is shared vendor bill? Uh, so I'll just start by explaining what suite solutions are. Um, they're pre-built offerings, uh, meaning that they're designed and developed to accelerate the delivery of uh, custom functionality to customer accounts. It's designed by NetSuite. Uh, and they're also non-managed, meaning that the, uh, you know, they're configurable uh, to your business requirements. So shared vendor bill itself, uh, is a solution that enables you to specify the distribution of expenses and taxes from vendor bills across subsidiaries, which would be an intercompany distribution, or uh, across segments within a subsidiary, which would be an intra-company distribution. And these distributions can be percentage-based or amount-based. So uh, really, uh, customers that might have a lot of you know, intercompany bill packs uh, could stand to benefit from this suite app. I'll discuss a little bit about in the installation process here. Uh, there are certain prerequisite features that you should enable before installing the bundle. Um, if you are using a One World account or you have multiple currencies, uh, you'll have to make sure that that feature is enabled, especially if you're doing some sort of a intercompany distribution uh, for subsidiaries that might be transacting in different currencies. Also, you want to enable client suite scripts, server suite scripts, suite flow, custom records, and custom segments. Those are typically enabled uh, when your account is initially configured anyway. And also automated intercompany management is uh, required for um, any intercompany distributions. And uh, note there is that to use automated intercompany management, uh, you'll have to set up an elimination subsidiary. Okay. There are also certain uh, role permissions you would need to be able to install the bundle. Uh, either you would have to be installing the bundle from the administrator role, or you need to have the suite bundler permission added to your role. Then you can install the uh, bundle by going to customization, suite bundler, search and install bundles. From there, you'll search for uh, the name suite solutions, shared vendor bill, and uh, select that bundle and then click install to begin the installation process. And once that process uh, you know, completes and you've refreshed that page until it's 100% uh, installed, you can then configure the general preferences for uh, the shared vendor bill. That's under setup, company, general preferences. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see a sub tab for custom preferences. That should show you uh, any of these fields that are specific to the uh, suite solutions and uh, for the shared vendor bill specifically, that's where you find this information here. This is all going to be blank. Uh, so when you um, install a bundle, you're going to have admin documentation associated with that bundle that you can download, and it will walk you through these uh, initial steps to configure the uh, shared vendor bill. And these values that you see populated into any of these fields here are included in that um, admin documentation that's provided along with the bundle. So when I set this up, I was just copying and pasting that information into these fields. But I will just draw your attention though to the uh, advanced intercompany journals, which I um, made sure is enab enabled because we will be using this for intercompany distributions. And what that means is that when the uh, shared vendor bill is approved, there will be a um, generated uh, uh, advanced company journal entry that actually performs the allocation. Another um, way that you'll see that your account changed upon installing the bundle is that there'll be a new custom record in your account called a uh, bill distribution schedule. So you can find your bill distribution schedules under lists, custom, uh, shared vendor bill, bill distribution schedule, and that'll pull up the list for you. So what these are is uh, a totally customizable uh, way to uh, distribute your expenses. You can define on the bill distribution schedule how um, non-inventory items like service items or expenses get split into departments, uh, as I mentioned, for like an intra-company distribution or across subsidiaries for an inter-company distribution. You can apply these schedules to vendor bills. Uh, and in the case of a percentage-based distribution, you can specify a default allocation weight for each uh, line in your bill distribution schedule. 
And um, you can choose to you know, distribute these amounts across either um, segments or entities. Okay. This is um, the form that you would see if you go follow the navigation on the previous screen to uh, list custom shared vendor bill, bill distribution schedule new. This is the uh, shared uh, vendor bill, bill distribution schedule form here. Uh, so initially, you're just going to be presented with this header information. You want to populate this with uh, you know, a name that's specific to the subsidiary uh, that this distribution schedule is uh, applied to. You specify that subsidiary in the source subsidiary field drop down there. Uh, so yeah, the source subsidiary is just the subsidiary to which the distribution schedule applies. Um, also, there are several uh, options in the middle of the screen that you might see in there. Um, if it's an intercompany uh, distribution schedule, you wanna make sure that that is flagged. Also, uh, source segments, you would enable that if you want the location, class, department, or any other custom segments on the journal entry to be the same as specified on the vendor bill expense line item. And so that's referring to the, uh, the advanced intercompany journal entry that's created from the vendor bill upon approval. Also, um, enabling source accounts is if you want the expense and item accounts on the journal entry to be the same as those specified on the vendor bill expense line item. Okay. So those are a few options there. And then once you've entered all that information into the header and saved, you have the ability to add distribution schedule lines. But to configure these lines, and I'm going to put the emphasis now on the intercompany bill distribution schedule, um, you need to make sure that you set up some intercompany uh, entities and accounts in advance. So uh, this is just saying that you know, intercompany bill distribution schedule lines depend on you know, the configuration of your intercompany accounts receivable accounts, uh, accounts payable accounts, intercompany customers, and intercompany vendors. So this here is uh, just a slide devoted to those intercompany accounts. Um, so to set up your intercompany AR account, you want to make sure that the source subsidiary must receive the distributed amount from the destination subsidiaries for all the allocated expenses. So the intercompany AR account must be available to the source subsidiary and the elimination subsidiaries, whereas with the intercompany AP account, you want the destination subsidiary that receives the distributed expense pays the expense to the source subsidiary as to a vendor. Therefore, the intercompany account payable account must be available to the destination and elimination subsidiaries. And this note on the bottom here is saying that when you go to create the account, you need to enable this flag, uh, enable uh, eliminate intercompany transactions. So this is an example of a intercompany AR account I created. Here, I just gave this a generic name of intercompany AR, and I classified it as an accounts receivable type account. Um, these accounts have to be uh, either AR or AP type accounts. Then um, you're able to in uh, enable this flag right here, the eliminate intercompany transactions flag. And I've also made sure that this is shared across all subsidiaries uh, by just selecting the global entity and uh, enabling the include children flag here. And I did the same setup for the intercompany AP account, just only difference being that this is an accounts payable type account. Next, uh, we're ready to move on to configuring the intercompany customers and intercompany vendors. A little note on this, um, you'll be creating your intercompany vendors and customers the same way that you create your standard uh, vendors or customers, but uh, that is to say, following the same navigation path, though you may need to customize the form or create a new version of the customer vendor entry forms that expose a certain field shown here, this represents subsidiary field. So when creating an intercompany customer, uh, we want to specify a primary subsidiary and a represent subsidiary, and we'll do the same for intercompany vendors. Uh, customer, the, the primary subsidiary corresponds to the source subsidiary in which the customer is based where the represent subsidiary is the destination subsidiary to which the expenses are distributed. For a vendor, the primary subsidiary is the destination subsidiary to which the expenses are distributed, and the represent subsidiary is the source subsidiary that the expense is distributed from. So in that way, they're almost like mirror images. 
Here I've created a intercompany customer that is reflecting the AR that subsidiary one gets from subsidiary two. Here I've got the primary subsidiary as US one, and the represent subsidiary, which I exposed on this form, is US two. And then on intercompany vendor, this is representing the payable that US two pays to US one. So here the primary subsidiary is US two and the represent subsidiary is US one. So when you're going to add a new bill distribution schedule line, this is the form uh, that you're presented with. So in uh, this screenshot here, allocation weight is an enabled field. This is a, an example where we're creating a, a percentage-based distribution. If we, uh, if we uh, selected amount-based distribution on the uh, header of the bill distribution schedule, um, this field would be disabled. So that's the allocation weight here. But if it is a percentage-based, we're able to specify some default weight down here. So if we say 50% of the expense to be uh, allocated to the subsidiary one and 50% should be allocated to subsidiary two, that would be the default weight um, applied to a uh, vendor bill on the, uh, 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 the bill distribution schedule. Uh, alternatively, though, if it's an amount based, we have to configure that ourselves, uh, specifying what amount of the expense line is allocated to one subsidiary or the other. Um, so destination subsidiary here is the destination subsidiary for the distributed expense. Um, for intercompany distribution schedules, the first bill distribution line is for the source subsidiary. And uh, um, that's that's pretty much all you would enter for the first line. So where it says destination subsidiary here, you would just enter the subsidiary, the, the source subsidiary specified in the header of the bill distribution schedule. And for the next subsequent lines, you can enter the destination subsidiaries to which the uh, expense would be allocated. And for those, you need to specify the intercompany AR customer and the intercompany vendor and intercompany AP. Okay. So the intercompany vendor there, uh, or I'm sorry, the intercompany uh, AR is the um, account sustainable account you created for the source subsidiary that tracks the amount due from the destination subsidiary. And the intercompany customer is the customer you created for the combination of source and destination subsidiaries. And the intercompany AP is the uh, account in the destination subsidiary uh, account payable account in the destination subsidiary to the source subsidiary, and the air company vendor is the vendor you created for this combination of source and uh, destination subsidiaries. Okay. So here's an example of a simple bill distribution schedule I configured with lines. So this is a um, in, uh, an amount based distribution schedule. Um, it's an air company allocation. And I have enabled amount based here. This allocation weight 100% is just automatically enabled because this is an amount based distribution. Uh, when adjusting the distribution on an actual vendor bill, the uh, you will have to make sure that the amounts are adding up to 100% of the uh, total amount of the expense line. This is just automatically enabled for the uh, amount based. Whereas if I specified a, a percentage based distribution, I would have to make sure that those uh, weights that's fine on the lines are also totaling up to 100%. As we can see here, I've set this as the source subsidiary being subsidiary one. So the first line in the bill distribution schedule is just the destination subsidiary as the source subsidiary. Then the subsequent line, I'm specifying the destination subsidiary US2 and the intercompany AR, intercompany AP, intercompany customer, and intercompany vendor. And I can add, you know, if there was a US3, I could add uh, you know, the intercompany AR and AP again and whatever customers or vendors I set up for that combination of uh, source and destination entities. Okay, so now we're ready to get into a little bit of the use of shared vendor bills. So to create a shared vendor bill, just follow the standard navigation path for creating a vendor bill. It's just transactions, payables, enter bills. You wanna make sure when you first get to that page that you change the form. 
to the shared vendor bill form. And you want to make sure that this is in a pending approval state. The reason uh, for that is because, as I mentioned earlier, when the vendor bill is approved, it will create the allocation uh, journal entry. And um, if we continue to make adjustments, there will be reversal journal entries and uh, new journal entries associated with the vendor bill. So uh, just to, until we've finalized the distribution weights, we want to make sure that this is set in a pending approval state to avoid all those uh, you know, reversal journal entries. So on that form, we'll select the vendor and wait for the form to refresh. Then select the subsidiary if uh, we've got you know, uh, 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 vendors spread across subsidiaries. Or if not, we can just allow the field to auto-populate based on whatever specified as the primary subsidiary for that vendor. Then we'll select the uh, subsidiary-specific bill distribution schedule to apply the shared vendor bill. So you can see that in this screen here, I've specified a vendor um, that is sending some expense to uh, US-1 that we know is, needs to be allocated across multiple subsidiaries. So that's why we're using the shared vendor bill form. So I selected all steel here as a vendor waited for the form to refresh. Um, US-1 automatically populated there in the subsidiary field. And then that allowed uh, uh, this drop down to become available and we were able to select the appropriate bill distribution schedule for the subsidiary. And upon selecting that, these two flags become enabled that the schedule is in our company and the schedule is amount based. So once that uh, information is all finalized in the header and uh, any other mandatory fields um, are populated, you can then enter the expense lines that need to be allocated across subsidiaries. So scroll down to the expenses in line sub tab and add in um, an expense that is to be allocated. Here I've just entered in a general insurance expense for a nice even number of $1,000 that we need to allocate across those entities. And then we can click save, find you in a pending approval state. So here we can see that this is the bill saved in a pending approval state. And we have the option now uh, to adjust the distribution. So because this is amount based, um, there are not yet uh, predefined weights. Uh, so if it had been percentage based with a 50% weight for each line in the bill distribution schedule, it would automatically have a 50%, you know, $500 allocated to subsidiary one, $500 allocated to subsidiary two. But because this is um, amount based, we have to adjust the distribution and specify the amounts for each line. So we'll click this button here, and it takes us to this screen where we can see our expense line broken out uh, for each line in the bill distribution schedule. So we can see this on the left side of your screen here, you can see this is line one broken out for each line of the bill distribution schedule for subsidiary one and then subsidiary two. And we're gonna enter in the amounts here where it says transaction currency amount. Here I just selected the first line, entered 500 and hit enter. And we can see the current line total is 500. The line total for the insurance expense on the original vendor bill was 1,000. So we still have 500 remaining to distribute. So I enter 500 in here and hit enter. This will all clear out and we can click OK and then submit. And then you can view the bill distribution details on the bill again. We can see that the amount-based validations have passed. We've got the um, amounts of 500 allocated to each of the uh, subsidiaries in the bill distribution schedule. And we can see that there's not yet an allocation journal created for this bill because is saved still in a pending approval state. So the next step would be to approve it. We'll just edit the bill, change the approval status to approved and click save. So that's shown on this screenshot here. I've edited the bill. I'm changing the approval status on the right-hand side there, making it approved and saving. And that is showing uh, now, I mean, I'm sorry, after, after approving the bill, we want to go to the uh, bill distribution detail sub tab of the bill again. And we can now see that there is an allocation journal entry uh, created for this bill. So we can click that hyperlink and view the advanced intercompany journal entry that was created. And we can see the um, four lines in uh, advanced intercompany journal 
two for each subsidiary. So we can see from US one, we're crediting this uh, first expense for $500 and debiting the intercompany AR account for 500. And for subsidiary two, we're crediting the intercompany AP and debiting the insurance expense here. And we can see the intercompany uh, entities tagged for these lines. Here's the intercompany customer we set up and here's the intercompany vendor on the uh, second and third lines here. And in the memo, we have this helpful uh, system generated from vendor bill note here. So we know which vendor bill this is associated with and that um, any, any uh, intercompany journal entries with this memo, we would know that these were created from a shared vendor bill. Okay. We can also uh, go back to the original vendor bill and view the GL impact of that. So this is showing the total expense line um, we have a credit to accounts payable of a thousand and a debit to the insurance expense for a thousand. And this is just uh, associated with the US one subsidiary. Okay. So I think we have enough time here for a little demo. Yes. So I'm gonna... Okay, cool. I think that's enough time. So I'm going to go right here into NetSuite. Um, I've got the shared vendor bill form here selected. I've already selected my vendor. Made sure that this is in a pending approval state. Um, selected my bill distribution schedule here. Uh, other mandatory fields I've populated. I will just now enter an expense account. I need to refresh the form. Yeah. Something else I would uh, also like to mention is that we have the option to exclude any lines. So I'm, I'll just zoom in a little bit. We have the option to exclude any lines from the uh, bill distribution uh, schedule. So if we have multiple expense lines here, but only some of them are being allocated across uh, subsidiaries. We can pick and choose which ones to include in the bill distribution schedule, but I'm just going to include this line and continue. So we've got all of this information specified here We're on the shared vendor bill form as the uh, expense line. Bill distribution details tab doesn't show any information yet, so I'm going to save this in a pending approval state. Yep, so this is uh, now saved. We can go to the bill distribution detail sub tab here. We can see our lines, but with no uh, amount specified. So we need to adjust the distribution by clicking this button here. It takes us to the screen. Watch this uh, top right part here. I'm gonna click this line. So we can see the uh, current line total is zero. We have to distribute $1,000 left. Enter 500 here, 500 here. And we can see that that's all cleared out. I'll submit this. This is just saying you're changing the weights. Click OK. OK, now uh, that'll close the tab and automatically refresh the form. So wait for the form to uh, finish loading. And we can scroll down and view that bill distribution detail sub tab one more time. We can now see that the amounts are populated and the amount based validations have passed. 100% of the expense line is allocated. So now I'm going to edit this and approve it. And I will save.
And Tim, while we're waiting for that to finish, we have a question that came in for you from Barbara Stamp. Can you show a distribution by department? I don't have one prep for the session, but um, I could uh, look into setting that up and following up uh, with you uh, after this. That would be great. Okay. So there we go. This is approved. Due to build distribution details, we can see that the journal entry has been created. Also note that we still have the option to continue to adjust this distribution. Uh, we can adjust the distribution again. Um, and what, what that will do is it will make this allocation journal jump up to 606. So we can see it's number 604 in sequence here. Um, if I continue to adjust distribution, uh, this first uh, journal entry would then have a reversal. Um, so this would be reversed and that would be number 605. And then a new allocation journal entry would be associated with vendor bill uh, 6667. And that would be number 606. But it's for that reason that we uh, continue to recommend uh, saving and editing a and distribution entirely in a pending approval state. But anyway, this is the intercompany journal entry with those lines uh, shown up correctly. This is the allocation happening on the uh, journal entry. And then on the bill itself, I can uh, view the GL impact here. And I can see that $1,000 expense. Okay. And uh, that is really it for my session.